Vader TV. We're hanging out in uh, on thousand billion Needle Park. Degree. Yeah, we're having a panic in Needle Park mm. today. Uh, we're at Tompkins Square Park with Simi Mobile Disco in front of a bunch of little kids. Yeah, we're about Talk. to cook up. We're gonna fucking. We're gonna roast them. We're gonna eat their brains <laughs> and talk about techno. <laughs> it, it's weird to DJ in in New York because it doesn't ever seem magical. I guess like it should. I mean, you guys come from. Everybody seems too fickle for it. Yeah, we we've, we've been having a lot of conversations about this recently because um, like we've definitely seen sort of dance music sort of appreciation change in America over the last few years. Mm -hmm. The tracks that you, you are like get out of jail free cards in Europe <laughs> don't work over here. Do you know what I mean? It's like a totally different playing field. Don't kill me for it, but the, someone I love and who it kind of reminded me of <coughs> is, um, is Kylie Minogue. <laughs> We'd work with Kylie. That's kind of the vibe I felt, it went in a really good way. This very like kind of celebratory, not necessarily Super, not not super super gay. If it doesn't need to be, yeah. definitely kind of Euro. Like, no, does that, do we, you know, like it's definitely doing well with the uh, with the gay market. Has it been? Yeah, it's been going down great with the gays. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell me what you're talking about. So. Um, our, our manager lives uh, opposite uh, a place called the Joiners Arms in uh, London. The Joiners Arms. Joiners. Oh, Joiners Arms. Which is like a, yeah, a big either, a big. Actually. Uh, after party gay club and he can see like the guys getting sucked off in the alleyway from his window and stuff like that so it's quite a joke but he said listening he went, to some in mobile disco <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> yeah so you're going back home today are you excited is it sad to leave new york ever every time i come to new york i love it actually yeah. I, we always have a really good time and actually new york is the is the most um like we played mainly sort of techno last night and it went down really really well like new york is the most kind of like European -y sort of feeling. LA is the more kind of like noisy, that sort of stuff. I mean, playing, that seems different though, too. Like, I feel like you guys would play on a rooftop pool, you know, you played the standard and like everybody would give you a back up while you like. And now, every time we've played there, it's been that, it's been the opposite. It's been like these kind of weird, massive raves that with loads of like girls in like fluffy bikinis and like pacifiers and that whole thing, which is like a whole like scary 90s throwback thing. But, you know, it's Kind of fun, that sounds kind of just fun. a bit weird. That's true. That's true. Yeah, so kind of sad to leave. Kind of nice to see family and friends because we've been around, we've been traveling a lot recently. We've like been in Japan and Europe and all over the place. So yeah. this album was sort of made in little snippets over a period of a few months. But we kind of like it that way in a way. It means you're really focused on actually getting the studio and you kind of look forward to doing it. And it's not like you ever get bored and you know feel like you're banging your head against a wall. Mm. Has it changed now, having this kind of album be such a vocal spotlight album? Has it changed how you're going to put together songs in the future? Well, we're actually in the middle of making like a, a techno version of the record. Like a, oh, really? Yeah, just like a, like a less vocal, like all the longer versions and, huh. and making some kind of pretty, pretty weird esoteric techno and just putting out like a totally different take of the record. Because like a lot, of the, a lot of the record we probably wouldn't play out as DJs really, you know, it's like, hmm. it's really designed for for listening at home. You know, oh, so. that's so weird. That's kind of awesome, actually. I, I was, I've always liked it, how songs can exist in different ways, you know, that the kind of classic 80s thing where you had like a, a single version and then like a 12-inch would, you know, they'd get their mate on to come and play a horrible sax solo over the top <laughs> of it or something, you know. Sure. And so we're just going to do that ourselves, basically. No sax, no, no sax, sax.